Am I gonna take all of this off as soon as I'm done? Yeah, probably. Hi guys, welcome back. So if you've seen my last video, you kind of know what's about to happen. So today I'm doing what I did in my last video, which is I'm gonna sit and do my makeup. And it's gonna be a bit different. I think I'm gonna go for more of like a pinky, like, I don't know. It will make it different from last time. And I'm going to talk about some social issues on the topic list for today. I have a few ideas that I've been making since I made my last video. And I think today we're going to focus on feminism. Before I get started, I'm just going to quickly like explain to you what I'm doing. And then we can get in and we won't have too many distractions. So I've done moisturiser and all of that. Um... Now, I'm going to keep it very light. I've been going to college for a few days now and I've worn makeup two days in a row and I'm already like, ugh. So, not too much today. I'm going to go in with this um, serum thing from Glossier. It's actually my mum's. I stole it. Um, and then I'm just going to put tinted moisturiser on. I'm not going to do concealer today or anything. I'm just not feeling it. And then we'll just make it kind of pink, lots of blush, pink eyeshadow or something. We'll just make it fun. And also, even though colours don't have a gender, pink would be nice to do for feminism, I think. So I have one question for you guys. Do you believe in equal rights for all people? I'll let you, I'll wait for you to respond. If you responded yes, then congratulations, you're a feminist. It's really it's that easy. Crazy. I think what people have their, what people struggle like getting their head around is, well, if it's for everyone, then why is it called feminism? And I think it's very similar to the whole Black Lives Matter, All Lives Matter argument. I think if if it was called equalism, or something then that would mean that I don't know say the issue of um, the pay gap right that would mean that a possible solution to that would be to lower the the salaries of men to meet women or you could raise the salary of women to meet men but the other one is still a possibility of a, as a solution but with feminism with feminism the your only solution is to bring the pay of women up to meet men so like, we don't want to bring men down to the level that we are at. We just want to, like, get everybody up there, you know? And, you know, it does really focus mainly on women's issues, which is why it's called feminism. It's like, we don't... We're not saying we don't want rights for men, rights for other people. We're saying we want the same rights for everyone. And a lot of people, the majority of people who don't have a lot of rights are women. And, you know, that's where it goes back to the whole all lives matter thing. Like, all lives do matter. We're not saying that they don't. But right now, the issue isn't with all lives. It's with black lives. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and you can kind of get an understanding. Because even when I first, like, was introduced to this whole movement and stuff, like, I didn't... Even I was kind of confused as to why they would call it feminism. Because that to me, it suggested, like... A superiority thing of like oh it's women like and it's like sort of this whole misandrist thing but it's not like that at all and I'm glad that like I educated myself a bit more on this which is something that I just encourage everyone to do like if you are the slightest bit unsure on anything or you just you know you think you're sure on something but you know you want more information just go and educate yourself it is not hard to do that at all you what open your phone go on Google and type something in and there you go or you know you go to my Pinterest board my Pinterest is here and you just read some stuff and there you go like there's tons of outlets of information that you can just so easily access and I think that's like we really need to check our privilege you know like we I'm guessing if you're watching this video you have access to electronic devices and you have access to internet so why not use it you know so I started like understanding what feminism was and I started to become a feminist in I want to say like year eight 
I think whenever I got Pinterest, I Pinterest really like helped me to understand why certain things would happen and certain things would happen to some people like me and wouldn't happen to other people or it just made me understand my internalized misogyny and stuff and how like I feed into that and how I can stop myself doing that. I am gonna use this Naked Cherry palette. I don't know, do we go for something a bit red or a bit pink? I'm so excited to use this for Christmas time. Here are the colors. What are we thinking? I kind of like that one right at the end, but it, it, the pink one, right, the shiny one. <laughs> but I don't know, is it too dark? Do I wanna go for something a bit more pink? Like this side? Maybe we'll go like down here for pinks and stuff. So I remember when I was in year 11, we had to do this like spoken presentation as part of our English GCSE. And we could literally do it on whatever topic, we just needed to be able to talk about it clearly to our class. And I did mine on why we still need feminism today. And honestly, it was one of the most terrifying experiences of my life because the boys in my class obviously weren't very supportive of that whole thing and you know like even though it was all jokes and stuff and like it didn't bother me too much like I would get like teased by them a lot in English and whatever classes I had them in because of that like you know like all this whole feminazi stuff and whatever so I thought that like it was really important that I did that for them even though like I wanted to do that presentation for myself but I thought it was, if I was going to do it in any of my classes, it would have been English, you know? I just, it's so frustrating to like be in a class with people who literally everybody thinks that way, you know? And when you get the opportunity to change, maybe change their mindset or, you know, educate them a bit more, why wouldn't you take it? But it was a really, really nerve-wracking presentation to do. I, I think I got like a distinction or something, like I did fine, or well, good. But I was really like, yeah, it wasn't the best experience, but I'm glad I did it. And I think it it starts with things like that. Like, t you know, that presentation wasn't very big. I wasn't talking to the United Nations. I was talking to my GCSE English classroom, who most of them didn't really care what I was saying. But, you know, the fact that like you still have just got to do those little bits to like spark some sort of change. And, you know, I got so many girls coming up to me after that and over the following couple of days just being like thank you so much for doing that that was really good that was so nice that you did that so it was nice because of them and i'm glad they appreciated it at least because you know like that whole thing of representation and stuff and you know people of color don't get enough representation and Women don't get right representation, even though my presentation was not a TV show or a movie or a book or anything. Like, it was still, like, I was still up there representing the thoughts and the feelings of half my class, you know, and half the population. I'm not trying to, like, big myself up, like, look what I did, but, like, I'm just trying to say that it's important that we do little things like that. So, we can't talk about feminism without talking about men, because everything comes back to men, doesn't it? Common misconception. Feminists hate men. Feminism did not make me hate men at all, but the reaction to it kind of did. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not gonna like be like, oh my god, I hate all men. All men are awful. But <laughs> their reaction to it was just not great. And what I think something that I've recently realised that's actually really irritating to me is that you know what men don't see is that yes, it's called feminism. But it really, like, it really does focus on a lot of men's issues as well. The fact that they, there is a thing such as toxic masculinity. And, you know, men are supposed, there's all these expectations of what they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be the man of the house. They're not supposed to display emotions. And then you get things like men have one of the highest suicide rates in the world and stuff. And, you know, like, we're, when we say, like, take down the patriarchy and stuff, like, that's beneficial for them too. And, you know, this whole joke of, like, I don't know, when the whole World War Three thing was going on, especially, I saw it then, but how men were like, it's so unfair that, like, only the men get drafted to war, like, because equal rights and stuff, like, women should as well. But guess what, Chad? Guess who made that stupid rule up? Men. And the patriarchy. So, 
to take it all down. But like we're we're not just focusing on this is a woman's problem, this is a woman's problem, this is a woman's problem, and we don't care about men's problems. That is not the case whatsoever, like in any way, shape or form. But the thing that's really annoyed me about that is that in, I feel like whenever I talk to a guy about this, I have to bring up that like, you know, it, it benefits you as well. Like the fact that I have to show how it's gonna benefit them in order for them to take it seriously. I think that in itself just goes to show how much we need it. Like if you can't just accept that you know, this entire group, this entire 50% of the population deserves the same rights as you. There is your problem. Like, of course I want to still do stuff to help men and men's issues and stuff, but you should be able to listen to me talk about it and m listen to me focus on the women's issues because they are a lot worse without, w and still take it seriously. You know, I shouldn't have to be like, oh, but this is for you too. Like, you'll get something good out of it as well. Please listen to me now. Like, I, we shouldn't have to, have to do that. I've gone in with the, I've gone in with this colour. It's very light pink, if this focuses. I've gone in with this colour. I can't see what it said. And then I've just gone into my crease with this darker, more purpley colour. And I'll probably put this over my lid. Maybe use a bit of this somewhere. And maybe I'll put this in, like, my inner corner or something. I also have this um, cream eyeshadow thing. It's like a pink glittery one. I'll show you when I open it. One thing that I did want to mention is that you can't call yourself a feminist unless you're an intersectional feminist. That means women of colour, women with disabilities, women who live in poverty, women who live in different countries. They all count. And if you're just fighting for the rights of white, straight, cis women in Western countries, you're not a feminist at all. Like, it's for all women. So I think that's also a really important thing to remember, is that you've got to support all of us, you know? You can't just select who you want to give rights to, because then, you know, you're not really any better than the men who put all these terrible systems and laws and stuff in place. Something that I think was one of their biggest issues for me when I was growing up is sort of the double standard, um, especially in Asian communities, which hopefully I think with the next generation that comes along and starts being parents and stuff, like I think we can really change it. But you know, one thing I hear all the time when I, one thing I heard all the time when I was growing up is, you know, if my cousin or someone, like a guy, like a boy who is a similar age to me, like messed up or spilled everything or, you know, got his clothes dirty playing football or something or, you know, like got into an argument with me, the immediate reaction is, oh, you know, boys will be boys, you know, like girls mature, you guys mature a lot faster than boys, so just like let, let them be, you know, they're not as mature as you. And um, okay fair enough I guess but if you're gonna use this whole thing of like girls are more mature why not use it when you're talking to boys as well like Samuel your older sister Amelia I don't know why I'm coming up with these names but like Samuel don't do that look up to your sister Amelia because you know girls mature faster than boys you should use her as a role model then good characteristics and stuff of girls are only brought to light when it excuses boys' behavior if you're gonna use it once, you can use it every other time as well, you know? Like, I don't need to be an excuse for someone else's behavior just because I'm more mature, even when I'm possibly younger, you know? And so something I absolutely hate about Asian, South Asian culture is this whole thing, and like, I don't really see it in my family, which is a really good thing, but I do see it like in within the culture, but this whole thing of like, you know, if somebody gives birth to a baby boy, like, come, bring the mitai, bring the sweets and stuff, and like, oh, let's have a big celebration, or you're so blessed and stuff, but, you know, as soon as a girl comes along, it's like, shame, bro. Sorry. Yeah, like, there's this whole celebration for a baby boy being born, but the moment, from the moment a girl is born, she is automatically just completely devalued, which I think is one of the, one of the most horrible things. One of the main things that I would really like to t 
take down as a feminist is rape culture. I think it's so incredibly, honestly, stupid, really, really stupid how it all works, you know? Like, automatically, the first question anybody asks after a girl is raped is, oh, what was she wearing? Why does it matter? If it re if what a girl was wearing really, really mattered, then, you know, rape cases would go up in the summer. Women in the 1920s wearing dresses down to their ankles wouldn't get raped. Children would not get raped. Women wearing um, like hijabs and burqas and you know dressing really modestly because of their religion would not get raped but newsflash they still do. Rape has nothing to do with fashion and everything to do with rapists. So that's something that really really needs to like this whole slut shaming thing like a guy you know sleeps around and whatever and he's like in control of his sexuality and he is just out there you know living life but the moment a woman decides to do that it's like Oh my god, what slur, what sly, blah, 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 blah. This is the, um, can you see it? The sparkly pink. Like, it doesn't, this whole victim blaming thing in rape culture is one of the most awful things ever. Like, why are you going to blame the fact that, you know, she maybe she drank a bit too much and maybe she was wearing a, a skirt that was slightly above her knee, you know? It's, it's so ridiculous. It's not the victim's fault at all. You know, if, I, if I'm walking alone at night, right, and I see the doors to a bank are wide open, does that mean that I'm compelled to go in and steal money? No. That is a decision that I make. I make this decision not to do that, and I carry on walking. Maybe, you know what, I'll shut the doors if I think it was an accident that they were left open. But the person that goes in and steals stuff that's a decision that they made. No one was telling them, please, come, the doors are open, take money from us. Girls shouldn't have to wear, like, clothes that, jeans that go down right to their ankle and turtleneck tops just for people not to touch them inappropriately. So then does that mean that you're not wearing a helmet? Can I whack you over the head with a baseball bat? No. It's literally, it's at the point, I'm at the point where I'm, it's laughably stupid how people deal with things like rape you know you go into court and a guy will be like you know like i was drunk and she was really drunk and you know she was wearing this tiny itty bitty little dress and that excuses him for his crime whereas in any other crime that would be seen as a confession it's unbelievable how they can use the most randomest stupidest things to excuse one of the worst things that could that you could do to someone another thing that very that really kind of irritates me even though it doesn't really happen in england especially not in my college but more in america is dress codes i get you know maybe you want them to dress a bit professional or something because they're in a educational environment i get that but you know when it's 35 degrees outside i don't think they're gonna want to wear long sleeve tops you know i'm just guessing sorry my camera died but maybe they want to wear a vest and they want to wear shorts like how ridiculous is it that it's like oh my god your sh your shoulders are showing how how is anyone gonna concentrate oh my god her shoulders are out how how are you gonna tell me you can sexualize shoulders in in Honestly, I think it's kind of insulting to the guys as well that we're told that they are so incompetent of, you know, like, keeping themselves together that girls need to hide their shoulders and hide their knees and random, random parts of their body like that. And it's, you know what, frankly, I don't think it's got anything to do with, oh, boys can't concentrate and, oh, we want you to look professional in your environment. I think it's just control. All men... I'm generalizing but men in positions of power have wanted to do for centuries is control women that's why we have things in states like the southern states in america with all these insane abortion laws where like you if you get an abortion then you can be subject to like the death penalty 
how does that make sense? You're going to punish someone because they killed a person by killing them and then you justify it by saying you're pro-life. It does not make any sense at all. And this whole pro-choice and pro-life thing, I think if you're not pro-choice, I'm sorry, I cannot talk to you. You know, pro-choice, I think a lot of people, mainly like older people, like, I don't know, older millennials and Gen X and boomers and stuff, think that, you know, oh, if you're um, pro-choice, that means you're pro-abortion. Like, you think everyone should get an abortion, which is completely not true at all. Pro-choice is, you know, like, you having your preference, whether that's to do with ethics or religion or whatever, like, me, personally, like, I don't want to get an abortion, I don't necessarily agree with it for me, but I'm not going to shame this other person for doing it, because it's their choice, it's their decision, and honestly, it's none of my business. And I don't think pro-life people are pro-life in any way, shape, or form. They're pro-forced reproduction. They're, if they were really pro-life, especially those people in America, they would be adopting all the children in in care, left, right and centre, and they would be throwing fits at the way that children are treated at these ICE camps and the um, immigration places in America because it's absolutely dreadful how people, and especially children, are getting treated in those places. It's insane that a country so advanced as America is treating people like that. Yeah, you're not, you're not pro-life at all, especially if you're in support of sentencing women to death because of getting, they got an abortion. And you know, countries like, um, I can't remember which Scandinavian country it is, but they've like, legalized abortion it's all right you can come and you know abortion rates have gone down so much so much and anti-abortion laws doesn't stop abortion it just increases how many unsafe abortions are happening and therefore how many more women are dying and stuff but again i highly doubt that people making these laws actually care about the lives of women it's just more about their control over them goes back to the whole dress codes thing it's not about oh you know timmy can't concentrate because your shoulders are out and he's like oh my god it's you know like we want to impose some ridiculous law um rules that you have to follow because we're in charge and you know we're just going to focus on the girls but brad yeah you can walk around shirtless it's, it's fine have you been working out nice something that is a lot more prominent in my day-to-day -day life is the gendering of so many things and objects like for example makeup since when <laughs> since when did makeup have a specific jet oh my god so much came out since when was only one type of person allowed to wear makeup because i don't know if you know but like kings and queens and people during the renaissance and stuff like all the dudes wore makeup like it's and you know the dudes wore heels like high heels were invented and first worn by men and it's so frustrating that people have such disapproval of people other than women wearing and using those things like first of all how does it affect you honestly if you know you're walking down the road and you see a guy and he's got glittery eyeshadow on does that stop you from, you know, getting on with your life? No. So why do you even care in the first place? Like, gendering things and objects is so incredibly toxic for both girls and boys. Because we're, whatever, you know, makeup and dresses and heels and stuff, they're, them being associated with females makes them invaluable because we're taught that anything feminine is inherently invaluable so i think that's why like it's okay for a girl to wear you know like men's clothes and hoodies and trousers and stuff but the moment a guy does like he loses his value because we're taught that feminine things just don't have the same um don't hold the same position you know in terms of their value i still see you know you see those adverts and stuff on tv for like oh this this toy pampering set and it's just girls in there and I'm like why 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 
why I'm so glad that places are beginning to stop gendering their toys and things like that like you know not just girls want to play with barbies and not just boys want to play with monster trucks barbies are fun and so are monster trucks and any kid should be able to play with them and to everyone who's like oh but how will i know what to get for so and so like for their birthday and stuff i don't know maybe get to know them and find out what they like not that difficult at all and it it's nicer for the kids to have more of a a variety of things to play with I think the last thing I'm going to cover, because I'm almost done now, we'll cover one more point. Something that I've really noticed um, a lot in college and just talking to guys that aren't just like, you know, the same people I've been with for five years and getting different perspectives. One thing I've noticed is that they really like, you know, shy girls and I guess that means insecure girls and I really, really do not like that at all like sure have your preferences and whatever and i get that you might not want a loud obnoxious girl but if you really think about like what that comes down to it's basically saying like i want an insecure girl so that when i tell her i like her she feels extremely validated and therefore indebted to me and so if and when we get together she'll be less likely to leave me that's pretty much what it is because a girl who has any sort of self-worth self -worth and self-confidence, you know, will be able to say no and say like, I'm worth more than this and they are more likely to leave whatever awful situation they are in when they're dating you. And that's something that really scares a lot of guys. I think having some, a woman who's more confident in herself, that's because of how society has portrayed us and you know, if you ever see like a super confident girl who's just like so secure with herself and stuff then she's obnoxious and she's a don't want to swear on here but a b i c t h no b i t c -H. <laughs> oh my god i spelt it like the vine where she's like b a c t h I mean B-I-T-C-H <laughs> and like that they get um, associated with all of these really negative connotations and that's again going back to the whole capitalist society and stuff society needs women to have insecurities in order to pay off them and market to them things that they don't need they didn't need until this point but now you're telling them that they do like plastic surgery and razors and i'm not like shaming anyone who does want to get plastic surgery that is completely your decision it's fine but we shouldn't have to and especially if you're not getting it for yourself do not get it unless it's if it's for yourself and that's what you want to do for you that's fine do not do it for anybody else please i think that's also quite interesting how obviously being a girl in this sort of a society you're just constantly criticizing how you are and how you look and you're never really fully happy with anything about yourself and you know I've really like struggled with that and I'm just like okay but this could be different and this could be different and this could be different and thankfully I've never experienced any extreme things because of that like eating disorders or anything and I'm very lucky to say that I haven't and I feel so bad for any girl that has but you know every single girl has something has some internalized thing of like just constantly criticizing themselves and it shows in different ways and you know i've tried to you know get over that and it's like oh but no you're amazing whatever but it's kind of funny that like the only thing that has really made me be being like you know what i don't care it's fine is me reminding myself that like this is exactly what men want and this is exactly what capitalism wants it wants me to be insecure of myself so they can profit off it that i don't know maybe it's a bit funny that like that is the only thing that's getting me to stop caring but it does and i'm like you know what i don't want to do that for you like i'll just be happy with however i am and i'll call it a day
you know, because no body type is ever good enough. If you were curvy in the 2000s, it was, uh, like, no, you should be, like, really thin and slim and have no nothing and just... And as soon as everyone started doing that, it changed and Kim Kardashian came with all of her curves and now it's this unattainable hourglass cinched waist figure and stuff. And it's very, honestly, it's very classist. Like, women back in, like, Renaissance times, I'm going back to Renaissance a lot, I don't know why. But, you know, like, the beauty standard was to be bigger, you know? And the only people who could be like that were the rich, higher class people because they could afford the food. And then when being skinny was a really desirable trait, it was, again, only for the richer people because unhealthy food was so much more affordable, and still is. It was so much more affordable, so it was so much harder for, you know, working class girls to attain. And, you know, now this whole hourglass figure. Why in our people do not have the type of time and energy to put into doing that? Like, so again, it's un unattainable for people who don't have wealth. So, you know, if you're feeling bad about yourself and nothing is working to make you feel good about yourself, just remember, be nice to yourself in spite of the men. Because that's what worked for me. Okay, I think... I'm done. Can you actually see that there's anything different with me? I've kept like all my face stuff really minimal so you can still see a lot of like my imperfections but that's fine. Can you see like what's on my lid? I did like an inner corner like like glittery one. Oh I have put mascara on and then I did like the pinks on the outside and I put a ton of blush and then I have this pink lip crayon that I put on from Maybelline and then I put on the Fenty Beauty Gloss in Fussy. Is it Fussy? Yeah, Fussy. I think I put on too much. <laughs> it got a bit carried away. And I'm just using the Glossier Lash Stick because I don't want a lot. I've recently been using the um, Benefit They're Real and it is amazing but it's so hard to get off so I don't really put my I don't want to put my lashes through that again this is what it looks like I hope it looks good sorry if I didn't really explain much of what I was doing this is just something that I'm very very passionate about and something I really really want to change you know like my entire English coursework is based on this I hope that my thoughts came out in somewhat of a understandable cohesive way I know, again, there's going to be so many things that I'm going to remember and I'm like, oh, I should have mentioned that. But, you know, if you have any questions or you just want to talk to me about it, feel free to just DM me. This is my Instagram. Um, go to my Pinterest board. Again, it will, all my like social media will be in the description if you want to find like a starting place to look up some things and like educate yourself a bit more. I do have quite a few other topics that I do want to cover in future videos um, but if there is anything in particular that you'd like to see me talk about just let me know. I'd be more than happy to research it and talk about it. I really enjoy doing these. It helps me get out a lot of frustration that I have with a lot of things. I hope this was enjoyable and I'll see you guys in the next video. Mwah. <coughs>